Okay, so I want to address a few things, and I want to start with honesty. Um, Ian here is eating in his pajamas, <laughs> and so that gives me the time to talk. Um, okay, first I want to address something. Someone uh, sent me something about Ian having a... Uh, and I'm going to make this little bit about him because so I can use it as a springboard and then I can go on for it. Somebody said uh, Ian had narcissistic personality disorder in which he had no empathy and he could you know he had to lie to live off, uh, feed off of people um, um, you know saying good things about him or uh, uh, flattering him and all that. And I, I don't think that that's I don't think that that's really the case. I think that people who see Ian as somebody who isn't honest doesn't understand Ian's role. Um, this is going to be hard for me to, uh, to say because it's kind of humiliating on myself here because I, I have to say something, some things which are totally open about myself. And, I, and the thing is, I think that Ian is a maintenance hatch for this thing with, which you call reality. I don't know if Ian is aware that he's a maintenance hatch. I think that it, it's kind of like when they design... Uh, they design a, a program in a computer, and the, and the engineer puts in a back door, so that if you're trapped in that program, you can escape. And I think that Ian connects people through YouTube, and he is that maintenance hatch. I don't even know that he's aware of the things that he says sometimes. Uh, he says things, and then contradicts them, and they sound wild, and they sound really hard to understand to some people. But have you ever thought... For a moment, that what you think is reality is just is just one aspect or everything that you're experiencing. Have you ever fucking thought about how we're all part of this one big, huge thing? What is people's concepts of uh, of reality? Good things happen, bad things happen. You know, good and bad, good and evil. How, what if they're both part of the same thing? If it's all one big sphere. And I'm using the term sphere because I can't come up with anything else. I mean, if we're all interconnected in this bubble, and we're all small little cells in this huge sphere, like a, a, a giant jellyfish, then, then maybe everything's programmed by this one mind that has a control over what is good and what is evil. And maybe, maybe people like Ian are out there and saying these things, which nobody else seems to understand, because we need to be exposed to a way out of this reality. Not a way out of this reality, mind you, but to see behind it. And we can't see it because we see it with, with human eyes. You know, uh, uh, Ian said once that it was like, what, uh, the spheres of salt water? I don't think it's just salt water because, you know, there's spheres, but there's, there's something about the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. You know, the eye contact. Eye contact, like when we, we made that video... Dude, we made that video where we're looking at a camera, but you saw something behind the eyes. And that, to me, means that the eyes are the window to the soul, and the soul can see things that the body cannot see. And while we're all trapped in this vision of reality, this physicality of reality, until we run into somebody like Ian, and I'm not saying that he's, uh, you know, I'm not saying here that he's a, a, a deity or that he's to be worshipped. He's not any different from you and me on the physical level. But he seems to be in touch with this, 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 this energy matrix which connects us all. And, and I notice this because I've seen people make video responses to Ian. Uh, and I'm talking about him as if he's not here. He is here. But this is because it's about me and him and all of you who watch his videos. There's something about this experience. This experience is growth. It is touching upon that which has to do with a bigger view of reality. Now, uh, of course, with Ian having, you know, made so many videos while on, on weed and all that, you, you think that you, you may think it's a joke, you may think he was just on weed. What if he touched on something? What if there's something to what he's saying? What if he just, you know, he has a mission that he didn't even choose to have to make everybody see that there's more to reality than what we see? What if the whole YouTube experience, and now, um, you know, if Ian starts speaking, um, what he says is going to mean different things to different people, but it's kind of like uh, if you, it's kind of like the drug DMT. Everybody who does DMT, there's about twelve different reactions that people have, and it's always one of the twelve. So, when Ian speaks, what do you see? What do you hear? Do you hear? Uh, are you open enough? Are you seeing what's going on here? 
I'm just making this this, this effort. Yeah. I don't know. That was weird, though. I felt some sort of prompt to say something or do something. Like say that. something. Oh, jeez. What? Uh, well, I keep... I, I, I think of the shape of it. Like, like if you're looking at a, like a stained glass mirror, that's how life is. Or that's how this... I guess you call it life. So, life order, is everything. Yeah. You've seen that stained glass picture. Describe it. Like it's colors, different colors and shapes, and that's what's. I mean, really, if you look around, this this could be a stained glass image, and it was just with all that stuff. Um. But like. I don't know, dude. It's like, like I'm trying to find a way to. Like I watch people. I used to watch people in college. Like just watch them in the in while well, I was in the big cafeteria, and it wasn't awkward. I mean, I wouldn't like super stare at any one person for so long or anything. And usually they wouldn't look back at me because I was just kind of watching them. Um, and on YouTube too, because you can watch all these people on YouTube. But like seeing the different shapes that people make and the different amplitudes that they make within their shape, and then trying to integrate each of those into one shape and then doing a bunch of different integration shapes. So like taking A, B, and C and making D out of it, taking A, B, and C and making E out of it because probably because it's A, B, C and something else or maybe D and E are, are the same but different, like a different base scales and something. Like D is E on a different plane of existence. So so sometimes, I don't know, it seems repetitive or... I understand what you're saying. I understand. And I think that I touched onto something here. You and I have achieved the... We have evolved into the ability to see. To see beyond that which can be presented in this physical construct. But what we haven't achieved yet is the ability to actually make out what we're seeing. I mean, maybe... And when you say all those... Uh, things which everybody say are crazy things and I can say they're crazy things because you know if you put it from the physical perspective they don't seem to make sense but at least you're seeing these things you're trying to figure out what is going on people are you guys going I mean are you trying to figure out what's going on are you just accepting everything you see is that is that where we are at the life that we are given how many years do you think we're gonna have on here how shouldn't we seek out knowledge uh, you know, shouldn't we figure out what's... And are we going to be happier if we figure out what is behind this reality? Are we... Is, it, is that the goal here? And if it doesn't mean anything, why do we see these things? What things? Well, you know, everything essentially, like the stained glass window, the spherical nature of things, and the things... Okay, I, I was a little surprised by you saying that, because I thought that you knew what I was talking about, but... um. We, I'm not saying that we see things that um, aren't physically there. Like, I'm not seeing a pink octopus flying here between us. Um, what I meant is simply just the w different way of seeing what is there. Okay. So, because what I was thinking, and I should, maybe I shouldn't have questioned you, just said what I was thinking, is that we see magnetics first, and then the matter that forms around the magnetic attraction. Because I really think like the Earth was formed as a result of a magnetic contusion. Like it started spinning, kind of like a gyroscope, and then it started to Ian, form. If we are all part of this thing, then Earth was not just formed out of a spinning thing because we're all integrated in it like fabric, or like threads of fabric. I think the camera moved a little bit when I punched the desk. Um, it's, it's like we're all integrated in this. Why? Why? And again, you guys caught this. Ian is not aware entirely that he does this thing. I mean, I think a lot of people come to Ian and they talk like him because he talks like that. But they don't really know, you know what they're saying. They don't really buy into what he's saying. It's different for me because I can see it's like cubism. It's like Picasso and cubism where he paints everything you know, from different angles. You have several different perspectives of the same thing in one painting. And I'm able to see that. And so other people look at that and say, oh, cool. 
And that's what the, what the problem is. Your audience is divided into three kinds of people. People who look at that and say, oh, cool, yeah, cool. And then people who can see what you're really saying. And then the people who think you're crazy. But because they, you know, they're inside of this little box or cube. Hypercube? Tesseract? Cube outside of a cube. Outside yeah. Of a cube. Inside of a cube, too. Yep. Depends on where you're standing. Jeez, man. <sighs> Yeah. This is funny. It's like you're seeing you eat pasta, and it's like everything is this morgue's board. Oh, it's like, it's like I don't want to eat, but I got all this food. But it's so much. Yeah, now you're anorexic. No, I'm trying to conserve food. Conserve food. But like right now, I feel guilty eating. I, I could eat this whole thing. I would eat, if you weren't here. I would. You know, the cameras and I would like ravish this, dude. It Go ahead and ravish it. We only live once. And this life, what I say I only live once is because all the lives that we do live are part of this one life. It never ends. It's like, I don't believe in actual reincarnation, but it, you know, if you take in consideration life and the afterlife, why is the afterlife an afterlife? What is it? Why isn't it a paralife, like parallel to this life, when you take away the, the you know, actual time? Take time out of the equation. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Who needs time? I mean, it's all spherical. I know. I was in a bed a couple nights ago, and I said, well, I vision, um, I'm asleep. And I felt the part of me that just heard that get angry or confused because it wasn't asleep when I said I was asleep. So I was drawing myself to be asleep. And I felt that notion of no time, like, like rip it itself. It was really intense. Strange. First time we're we're going to figure that out. It's probably not going to be within the allotted 10 minutes of time, ironically. But have you been taking this? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have 10 minutes, but it's a start. I think that I touched on something that was very important today. Um, how, I wonder how long it is. It doesn't tell us. Should I look at you while you're talking, or look at you on the camera, camera or look at the camera? Dude. It's all the same. Oh, okay. 